Hello once again, Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics. Welcome back to another episode of Finish It Fridays. Well, today we got a real treat because I've got a really old model kit here that needs to be finished. So this is a 1983 edition monogram 1969 Dodge 446 pack molded in 124 scale. And this one is really kind of special because it is molded in metal or metal glow blue. So this was a special plastic process that Monogram came up with. So we're going to take a look at that in a few minutes. But this is a really interesting kit to me because I never actually bought this thing. Somebody gave it to me. It was out of a collection or something like that and it was never finished. So when we open up the lid we're going to see where the last builder of this kit left off and then I'm going to finish it. So let's go down to the bench and take a look at this amazing little model kit. What was it like to be in a hobby shop back in 1983? Well, let's wind the clock back and take a look at this amazing little metal glow metallic blue 1969 440 Dodge six pack. So as you can see, there was no uh, pencil drawn or illustrated box top. What you had here was the exact model as photographed on the box. Again, really cool uh, kit we got here. So I will uh, flip the box up on its side so you can see the side of the box. On this side of the box we can see underneath the opening hood at that great 440 six-pack engine. Again, really awesome looking stuff. Out the back on the rear three-quarter shot we have this nice white stripe in here as well as the look at our back end. And then moving the box across, you can see back in 83 they had the barcodes. I think these were just fairly new in this era, but still you could uh, scan this thing out. So here we have our front three-quarter side view profile of the car, as well as the detail of that rear panel and the wonderful Mopar license plate. Turning the box onto this side, you can see the side profile of the car, as well as all the features. So it says, Special Series Superstock Racing Version of Dodge Super B, 124 scale muscle car, 8.5 inches long, or 21.6 centimeters, fully detailed chassis, molded in blue metal glow, metallic flex in high gloss plastic. Clear and plated parts, black vinyl Goodyear tires, Magnum 500 wheels, rakish air intake, torsion bar front suspension, heavy duty rear end. 440 cubic inch wedge Mopar engine, special air cleaner, hood lifts off. May be painted to match photos on box, cement and paint not included. 1983 monogram models. And then on this side is this same write-up, but in Dutch, French, German, Spanish, or sorry, Italian, Spanish, and Swedish. So quite a lot going on back for that era. But as I was saying, somebody has already started building this model. So let's just take the lid off the box and see where they left off. Well, right away we've got the instruction sheet. And uh, this is, again, from 1983. Very neat. Just give a quick look. And there we go. That was a quick look. <laughs> okay, so here we are. And... One thing that I find really cool about this is the guy did an amazing job on the bare metal foil. I haven't been able to put down bare metal foil quite as great as this guy did, but uh, he never painted the body. This is the authentic metal glow plastic, and it looks very dark to me, but with some of the light here you can see that light blue coming through, and uh, it's not bad. Now his Mopar engine is pretty much like just Tester's orange, sort of a Chevy orange. And then he's got the gold tricarbs on there. And uh, turning it over, you can see he's done a lot of the detail underneath. And uh, there you got your chassis and your rear Dana rear axle, I believe. The exhaust pipes are painted in gray. And there's the oil pan and that. Now one thing I noticed is the seam lines are not cleaned up. And there is a bit of a, sort of a gap in here where it's very glued. There's also no seam lines being scraped there. But uh, around the windows and that, it's all done. And he also um, 
got rid of the seam lines on the body and sanded them out. You can't even tell where they were, except down here at the bottom, you can still hear that and it's all up in the wheel arches. So I'm going to take this apart and it is kind of tricky because Monogram has these sprung in at the sides. Oh, there's another thing I noticed with this that's kind of interesting. Oops. Now I'm pulling apart, uh, pulling apart all the suspension on this. Ah, come on. Yeah, it's just really clamshelled in here. After I get this out, I'm going to have to rename the series Restore It Fridays. <laughs> okay, there it is. Actually, I think I broke loose a lot of the parts. Now, it's interesting because on the box it shows a white interior with a black dashboard, but uh, he's decided to go with this tan color, which is pretty good, actually. It's a neat color, but... I don't know how well it does against the metallic blue. I don't know, let me know your opinions on that. But down in the four corners, he's left in the mold marks. So I'm gonna to try to get rid of that without damaging this brown paint. But I do believe I will be repainting this carpet area. I just don't know if what I have available is, um, you know, gonna look like a sort of a different type of carpet color because that should be maybe even a deeper brown like almost chocolate or something I, I don't know it's uh, sort of going to be an interesting little bit of a challenge there he's got the glass in here but it's all loose and kept in good shape the roof also has that brown color in there and uh, there are some mold marks that have been left in here which I think I'm going to have to try to scrape down the um, firewall is all loose, so that's good. I can get it out for later as I finish this project off. Oh yes, the one thing that was kind of curious here is if you look at how the wheels are put on, there should be a cone to the end of the axle, but he's got it flattened down. So I think what he did is pop the wheels on and then use the uh, lighter on a piece of metal, heated up a piece of metal and squash those pins down so that the wheel backings won't pop off. The other thing that will need to be done is sanding down the tire treads and uh, that's not much of a problem. There's the hood that's already been painted flat black by the previous owner of the kit and it does look pretty mean. Mean Machine. The decal sheet is untouched. I'm not sure how that's going to go on the uh, shiny plastic, though. Might have an issue, but we'll see. See how it goes. See how this all unfolds. There's the seats, and the bottoms need to be cleaned up so that we can glue them down with the plastic to plastic. So the paint will have to be removed off of there. Then we've got what's left of the parts tree. Chrome bumper, gear shift lever, rear view mirror and the brake booster and master cylinder. This is going to be tricky. <laughs> Trying to glue the little headlights in here. And uh, it, it's a challenge. Then we've got our front bumper, I believe. Yeah, that's a front bumper. It's got the little turn signal lamps in there. We've got the dashboard. And I'm going to have to go and paint the chrome and all the Mopar details inside. Our air cleaner, Magnum 500 wheels that are half done, so I have to do the other half. And um, this little front panel goes underneath the uh, headlights. And our air cleaner is in here. Oh, and the rear bumper. The rear bumper is nice. I can get this around. Got it all ready to go. I might uh, just put the turn signal amber paint in there instead of the flat red that's been used but uh, that's about it so overall this thing is like as you can see pretty much ready to go just needs a little bit of uh, attention to detail in a few spots I'm not sure if I can get this engine out I do have a Chrysler orange somewhere I believe maybe I'll 
try to redo the engine block in that color. And uh, I also have a bit of reference which we'll take a look at next. I was going through my muscle car magazine collection when I came across this awesome Mopar action magazine from August 2004, which is amazing. This is 20 years ago now. But inside the magazine is this Reference Restoration 6-Pack B article. And there's our car right there. So if we open up the magazine a bit here, you can see it in black and white right there. Okay, so here we get into the article. This is a free B. Haha. -ha. That's what it says on this page. Free B. Can't make this stuff up, folks. <laughs> anyway, so as you can see, this has got the steel wheels with the red line tires, which is pretty cool. But uh, down below here, there's our engine. And the orange on here is not this type of orange. This is far brighter. You can see that uh, Mopar had a more red sort of orange in here. And I do believe I might have that paint as a model master. If not, I'll just leave it in how the uh, former owner painted this. But you can see one thing that is different. These valve covers are also painted with the orange, whereas here they're chrome. So I do believe the chrome ones would have been a dress-up accessory, but I might actually take this and paint those valve covers with the orange as well, since I'm there. You know what I mean? But there's the tricarbs, which he's got painted gold, which is pretty much accurate here. There's that front bumper with the amber turn signal lamps down below, and the little Super B icon, which unfortunately there is no decal for that. But it is molded on the grill. And there's the... Uh, the engine right here. The engine right there with the air cleaner also in Hemi Orange. So really there's not any chrome on that engine other than the breather cap. So I might go that way and uh, even paint the air cleaner with the orange. Just depends if I have that orange. Now over on this page there's more of the engine but this is black and white. Sometimes it's actually easier to see the details when they are in black and white instead of the glaring orange. You can see they've got those uh, clip type of uh, hose clamps on here instead of the screw winding ones which are I think better <laughs> screw I'm trying to get one of those apart on my Toyota and I only have a pair of pliers and the pliers kept flipping up underneath the opening getting locked on those things it was a really annoying day that day there's our dashboard in the car as well and it says turn to page 96 for more so where's 96 here 84, 92, page 98, of course, page 96, stuck in the middle of it all. Oh, it's just the concluding write-up. So this is going to be my reference to use this car here for our Mopar, and it should turn out pretty nice. I have this other magazine that I always take out as reference whenever I'm building any muscle car, because this thing is awesome. This is the Muscle Car Restoration Guide from 1992. Came out the same year that I graduated. So again, really a cool magazine. And I've <laughs> worn the cover right off this thing because I, uh, I use it so much. But this has got some really cool articles inside and I'll show you what those are. The first article is called Before the Restoration Begins and this is Plan Out Your Resto Before It Gathers Dust. Basically, this tells you about the environment, your workshop, the shop equipment you need, and other equipment. So it's not really uh, too helpful for building a plastic model, but if you want to build a diorama of somebody in an auto body shop, this whole thing has, you know, like the shop equipment and all that stuff you need so that you can start up a diorama of an auto body shop. Next in the magazine, we have the Engine Compartment Enlightenment. And this is Engine Compartment Detailing Tips for GM, Ford, and Chrysler. And then it's got all the color references and everything that's going on in a car's engine bay that, again, is essential to building these things. Page 73 is where we want to concentrate for this build. This is the Chrysler Motor Company. And what we have are the paint and color callouts and whatever else they did for items such as the frame or subframe, the A-arms and control arms, 
fuel pump, hood hinge, master cylinder lid, clutch cross shaft. So again, there's a lot of detail in here that basically gives you everything that the factory did when this car came out to the engine compartment and even parts of the chassis. So like here, the aluminum valve cover was originally equipped with a part number tag. So this restorer duplicated the tag and put it back on. The hoses, oil cap, and spark plug wires are also correct. You know, and it gives you all this stuff in these side articles. And here is more of it. We've got the fuel pump up in here. We've got the alternator. We've got the coil. We also have the power steering pump in there. We've got the valve cover with the original number painted on it. And this was just an expansion number using a grease pen. And a bunch of other great details down here. Oh, this is the little piece that sticks up for the hood. The, uh, you know, where the rubber goes to hold the hood, to cushion the hood down as well as the hood pin there. And it is saying that this was painted with the body and then the rubber bit was stuck on the top afterward. Another fascinating article in this magazine is called Going Undercover. And this is GM Ford and Mopar undercarriage restoration, which includes all your frame and suspension components. This image is quite fascinating here. It is a Chrysler e-body car and it shows little bits of lime green paint painted on certain bolts and what happened there is that when this car was going down the assembly line and it got to this stage where they're putting in all these components after they had tightened and torqued the bolts they painted them lime green and that was to let further people down the assembly line know that all these bolts were torqued to the right specification that was their check mark and they did all this sort of thing before the QR code, which we have today, actually came into place, where now they would torque all these and then add that to the QR code. So digitally, but this is more of a visual, physical sort of thing that they did back in the day. Now with all our magazine research, as well as internet pictures, which is another good source of research, let's carry on and finish this model. I was able to get the engine out of the chassis really easily. All I had to do was kind of push on it and it popped out. And the reason for that is because you know how I'm always saying you have to scrape the paint away on both pieces that you're going to glue together to get that wonderful plastic to plastic bond? Well, guess what did not happen here? The paint was not scraped away and you can see that the glue only glued the paint to the other paint. So just by wiggling this a little bit, everything popped apart. And to further prove that, I can imagine that... Oh, maybe... Maybe he did it on the valve covers here. Nope. There. Chrome to chrome. See? Chrome to paint. I'll try to get the valve covers off. I <laughs> don't think I can do it with... Oh, yeah, here we go. Valve cover off. Chrome paint to paint. Again, there's no crazy glue or anything that's going to make the uh, plastic to plastic bond. The only way to get the plastic to plastic bond is to scrape that paint off. Here's another area. Now, the only uh, thing is that these exhaust pipes are actually the only thing holding this down but if I just even with my pocket knife get under one of these I bet I can just do a little there we go a little quick wrist motion and now this is all out which is kind of nice because I want to paint these uh, steel and then put them back in. Somehow, I guess he didn't have steel paint, but uh, just having a gray transmission out the back and that, it um, doesn't look right. <laughs> uh, but anyway, the nice part is I can take the tires off because they're not really attached yet. They're waiting for those Magnum 500s to hold them all into place. But that is basically it for this. No. Oh dear, <laughs> that popped off. I guess maybe I can heat treat that end a little more. I don't know. 
Okay, and what else? Those are clear. I'm a little far away to do this. Yeah, that's out. That's out there. So where else is it attached? Right at the front. Yep, yeah, right there. And there. So remember, scrape your paint and glue plastic to plastic. Now I have a confession to make. After looking over all my Model Master paints that I have left, I don't actually have Hemi Orange or Chrysler Engine Orange. What I do have though is two bottles of Chrysler Engine Blue and three bottles of Chrysler Engine Red. So I guess I'm not doing too bad. And one bottle of Chevrolet Engine Red, which really looks orange to me. And I took a little of the Chevy Red. I know, sorry Mopar guys. But uh, I don't know how well you can see this. I painted the bottom half of the oil pan with this. And you can see the original orange this is. I think this is just a tester's orange. That's why it doesn't look quite like the engine orange. But if I take where the Chevy engine orange is and I kind of put it up against uh, the photograph here, this Chevy orange looks closest as I could get to the Hemi red, or the, sorry, the Hemi orange. And uh, I'm going to just repaint the engine with the Chevy engine red. So uh, forgive me Mopar guys, but it is as close as I can get with what I have. So let's just run with it. Here's our parts after I've gone in and cleaned up all the mold marks and scraped down the seam lines, as well as cleaned up all the contact points underneath. The other thing I did was use Easy Off Oven Cleaner and strip the chrome off the valve covers and air cleaner so that I can paint it with that orange paint. And the wheel backs popped off of the front K member, but that's all okay because <laughs> The wheelbacks aren't actually painted, they're that blue plastic. So it's going to be interesting to uh, paint those and get that right. The only area I couldn't do it was on the back here of the brake drums in the rear, but uh, that's okay. Also cleaned up the seam lines going along here on our mufflers and out on the exhaust pipes themselves, as well as some back here. So another thing oops, that I noticed was that um, I do believe that these Chrysler cars in this time period were unibody because you can see the subframe up, up front and then the partial frame in the back. Then it all goes to the floor pan. And I do believe that Chrysler would have painted that floor pan separately. And uh, it wouldn't be flat black is what I'm trying to say. It would be the body color. But that's not really going to happen in this build, because this is just trying to finish off what happened. Now here I had to remove the mold marks off of the front pan here, and out of here where the motor mounts are. But I do believe with just a little bit of flat black touch-up paint, I can bring this back to how the previous guy had it, which isn't too bad. The other thing is that the seat bottoms have been cleared of the paint. So now in the interior, you'll notice that it's scraped off there and there. And I can get a proper plastic to plastic glue contact. And the seat should cover any of the scrapes. But I also have to repaint this carpet. So I'm going to uh, carefully paint little rectangles, then go over top of the transmission tunnel and paint up in here just so that I'm not painting that scraped area. So I just have to steer the brush carefully around underneath there. Then we can get our plastic to plastic, glue our seats in, and uh, make this thing look nice. Also I have to get the hole or the paint out of the hole here and uh, that's just a simple drill or even my reaming tool. And since this kit is from the 80s I also thought maybe some 80s appropriate Iron Maiden would be nice to play off camera just so I can rock out and have a good time.
Here is our engine after the first coat of the new orange paint, as well as the steel on the back of the transmission. And you can see just how great this looks. I also tried to work the brush around that starter motor, cut it in a little bit better, but I still need a little bit of touch up. And I'm holding it on the oil filter with the grips, so I'm going to have to uh, paint that oil filter later. But I just want to show you what it looked like when it was painted all the way it should be. Here's our model car parts after a bit of painting and reinstallation, especially on the chassis here. But first we've got our interior, and here I painted a new brown color on the carpet, and that is Tester's 1166 Matte Military Brown, and there it is there. And you can see that it is quite a bit of a difference from whatever color the former owner of this kit put in. And once the seats are in, it will look quite nice, like it's actually sitting on some carpet. But you know what would be great in here would be to flock this if I had some nice dark brown flocking. Maybe in the future I can bring that into my hobby store. But we'll see how all that goes. Overall it's not bad. The dashboard I did paint the black gauges in, but here I need to paint the pedals on. And our door handles and that sort of thing. But overall the brown is not bad. Makes me think of my dad's 74 Buick. <laughs> now I did clean up the hood underneath. I got rid of the mold marks and there was one there, one there, one there, and one there. But now you can't really tell. Still waiting for some of the paint to dry up. But overall it looks good compared to the flat blacky head on the top. Pretty much matches underneath. The engine of course is still drying up. I think I'm going to leave this for 24 hours and then just paint the valve covers because they are a little thin looking, sort of semi-transparent because they were the dark blue plastic after I stripped them. But you can see that this is looking good because it was the lighter orange and now it's a darker orange. But overall, I mean, this is looking far better than uh, when I opened up the box earlier in the video. And here you can see the undercarriage. Now, I did paint up the shocks and I put them in. And I, it is tricky because once all this is glued together, the only way to bring them in is to go sideways. I put a little uh, glue in the hole and the shocks have a little pin on the bottom and a hole on the top to click into, well, not really click, but attach into a little pin. And unfortunately, I ended up breaking the pin off on this side when I was trying to scrape the paint off it, because it is really fragile, and this is from 83. So I think the plastic is getting a little brittle here and there. Uh, but yeah, I broke the pin off. So what I did is I just scraped the back, and I scraped a little bit off of this mounting area. But I had to put these in sideways with the tweezers and go up underneath, and then tilt them up until I could get them on the pin or in that location. And that was pretty tough. And the only way I got it to work was put glue in this hole first and then push the pin through it. And then it was sort of semi-melting in here as I was maneuvering it into shape. So that helped a lot. Now you can see, remember this was all flat black on the axle. I read up that the Dana rear axle was painted gloss black. So I just painted that in there. Now I should go off to the ends here and here, but <laughs> with the wheel backs attached, it's pretty difficult to get the brush in there properly. So I'm just gonna leave it. And up front, I cleaned up all the mounting points here and dropped in the K member. Now here you're gonna see one exhaust pipe or manifold sticking straight up. And that is because that's the original owner glued it in, but the other one, it broke. And uh, so what I'll do on the engine is put on the one that's broken here and then glue the engine down on the mounting posts there and there and there. And then um, maneuver that exhaust manifold onto the end of the pipe here. But on this side, I will just put a bunch of glue on there and, you know, scrape the paint off the engine where it goes and just push it and hold it into place until it glues back on. It's not a big deal, but uh, this is what I got to work with. Oh, yeah, and there's the the exhaust. I drilled out the uh, holes in the back just to make it more realistic. 
And then here I've got the drive shaft painted black, so once I'm able to put everything back together in this, it should look pretty good. But overall I'm having quite a bit of fun with this old kit, and just picking up where the former person had left off. Remember the magazine from 1992 that I showed you earlier? Well, I used some of the colors on here just to dress it up a bit more and get it more accurate to the actual Chrysler undercarriage. But certain things I left off, like the little lime green paint telling the uh, people in the factory that these bolts had been tightened. And the reason why I did that is because, well, the undercarriage is supposed to be painted body color to match the outside because it was all unibody and painted all at the same time. And items like the front K member are supposed to be gloss black and that sort of thing. But I didn't want to go that far. But maybe in the future, on a future build, I will follow that magazine more closely. But for now, I think this will suffice as certain items like the back of the disc brakes are still actually metallic blue. And I'm not going to try to correct that. Oh, but one thing I did do is, remember the front wheels popped off? Well, I took a hole punch that my dad had. Not a hole punch, but, you know, like a metal punch. And I found some black plastic sheet, and I just punched a little circle out there and glued it on the end. And now the wheels will not come off. They will, you know, sort of come off a bit, but they'll stop at the end of that disc. And that is the end of the little hub. Now, I didn't have to do it on the back because they actually did lock into place as they should. But the fronts were a little bit dicey and wanted to pull off. So that is my solution. And the wheel back, or actually the Magnum 500 wheel, it's kind of coned in the back or whatever. And that cone has enough room that this little bit on the end that I glued on does not interfere. So that's always a good sign. So again, there is my completed chassis. Now we just need the engine and the drive shaft. Oh, and the drive shaft was gloss black. I painted it gloss black. Originally it was flat black, then gloss black, but then I read that these were actually steel, and that's probably why the drive shafts are always so rusty in these cars, because they're unprotected. So I painted the drive shaft steel, and you'll see how it all looks once I get that engine installed. Here's our chassis after installing the engine and adding on the lower part of the air cleaner. I have to let this dry a little bit because I needed to paint the top area flat black, but once the air cleaner is ready, I can put the top in for it. You can see the great fan belt and everything in here. Again, I had to clean it up before putting it in the motor, but uh, it's looking not bad. The only issue I have is I've got to wait to glue on the other exhaust manifold on this side because I did try to put it in but uh, it was binding inside here, and then I have to move this pipe over to meet the lower portion of the uh, exhaust manifold. And that was forcing this side of the engine to push upward. So I need to give this at least 24 hours in order to let the glue completely harden up on the engine block and mounting points before trying to put in that exhaust manifold. But now you can see underneath I've got all the suspension in and the drive shaft, which is steel color. I also added on the wheels and tires. So there's the Magnum 500s in place. The only issue I have with this kit so far is that these are Goodyear steel belted radials. And I was debating whether or not to flip the tire on the other side. These are raised letters, of course. And then I thought, ah, well... This model is from 1983, so historically, this would have the new tires on it. The, well, like I say, the issue is that these, to be period correct for 1969, should say Goodyear uh, Polyglass GTs instead of steel belted radial. That's what we want on there. But overall, I mean, once you get the wheels in and in the right locations, you can see how straight and accurate they roll. They look good, like up there. They're not going like this or anything, so be careful when you assemble those wheels. But overall, I mean, this is looking really good. Everything fits together so nicely. That's what's great about Monogram, is that everything just drops right into place. You really don't need to clean up anything, but I will always suggest removing these mold marks, because even if they're not interfering with the model, just having discs like this everywhere 
doesn't look good. Oh, one other issue that I did have, which is sort of an issue. The distributor. They're calling for it to stick just out the side, which is not an issue. But as soon as you put this big square air cleaner on it, it uh, wants to squash it all out of the way. So I've got it kind of not really located the best way. Not factory, but I mean, what can I do? It won't fit under that little lip of the air cleaner. And you might say, well, there's these angled notches here. But I did look at it, and those actually do go to the back. So again, that's sort of just a little slight issue. It's a distributor location, but other than that, I mean, this thing's pretty much perfect. Here's the interior after adding in all the detail painting. I accidentally broke the gear stick lever, so be very careful. Again, like I was saying, this plastic is starting to get brittle. And of course, the most brittlest thing in the model I ended up snapping. But I did paint the shift ball with the uh, Molotol chrome pen. I did have to uh, scrape the seam line on it, but just to get it back into some kind of nice shape, that's what I did. I was debating on using white, but then I thought, ah, let's chrome it. Now down here there is a strip you'll see. Now this is with uh, hand painted with the Molotol pen. It is a little bit shaky. Now this is not supposed to be solid chrome. It's actually supposed to have a black line right through the center and then near the edge of the door there is a reflector. Yeah, I can't paint that tight. I'm sorry. <laughs> Also, one thing that is missing that's interesting is there's no window winder for the front window to go down, which should be somewhere in this location if we uh, look at the real car. But there is one for the back window, or the side window, which is pretty odd, actually. So I did paint the chrome on the panel, and there's a little triangle in there. I painted that chrome. And uh, there's our floor pedals all in place. So before I put the dashboard and steering wheel in, I thought we would take a look at them because they are the hardest to see once everything's glued together. Here is the dashboard, and this might be my best paint job to date with my eyeglasses and my eyes being not as good as they once were. So as you can see, I've added in this black insert panel. Now if the whole dashboard was painted flat black, that panel would also be flat black, of course. But seeing as this is the brown interior, if we look on the web for a minute. This is exactly how it appears in the picture of the real car. So what we have is the stock radio in there. I also added in the little green for the turn signal indicator lights. Then here I've added in the details for the speedometer as well as the tachometer. And uh, there we have all the little switches and everything, all chrome plated, as well as the little gauges like oil temperature and pressure and all that. I added a chrome line on the glove box door as well, or sorry, on the ashtray, as well as the glove box door. And what would set this off a little better is putting in a brown wash right in the cracks of those two doors. The final portion of our dashboard is, of course, the steering wheel. And this was still in the blue plastic when I had it but it was glued together. So what I used is the same wood kind of color that I use on some of the other models on this channel, like the 1964 Mercury Comet on the dashboard. So that's what this color is. And it does seem to match the other brown that the previous person used on their build. So all I have to do now is just install this on the dashboard and then throw the dashboard right into the car. Here's the dashboard with the steering wheel installed, and I had to actually add a little paint underneath just in that area there, because the way I had it in the clip, it uh, was still blue right there. But overall, I hope you enjoy this, because now I'm going to put it in our interior. Here's our completed interior, and you can see just how nice this turned out with the brown and everything. Boy, I'm sure glad I was able to keep his paint in here and still make this look good, even though I didn't have a color match for his original color. I do believe it might be a Humbrol paint, but again, I don't have it, so I can't tell. Oh, and surprise, I did paint the shift knob white, 
because I thought oh, maybe it looks a little too much like I just clipped it off the part tree in Chrome. One other thing I want you to note is I did remove the mold marks off the back of these two spots. This of course is where the interior is going to glue onto the uh, inside of the body as well as these two little pieces right there and there. So I have to get the uh, get that paint off of them. So now looking at our interior there you can see that wonderful dashboard and the front seats. Just creep this light into here. Maybe I'm casting more shadows. But overall, yeah, that is looking nicer. Move the light back up to where it was. There we go. Oh, that works. And there's that chrome trim up the side. Again, it's too bad I'm not a yeah, microsurgeon. I could put that little black line in there and the indicator lamps. I did paint the little Chrysler V on the back here. But again, overall, this is looking quite nice. And I'm sure it'll look great up against that blue, which again is odd. So this is the one-off interior option. A brown interior on a gloss blue car. Our radiator support wall actually had eight mold marks in it, and I was a little worried to take them out because I would affect that high gloss plastic, and uh, it's molded in color as well, so I didn't really want to get into ruining the thing. But what I did was I looked online and I noticed that Chrysler in the front, they had a blackout section, so that when you looked through the grill, you wouldn't see the body color paint. And right underneath this line right here, Going down this way, it's all flat black, or semi-gloss black. And that would black out the uh, vision through the front grill. So I'm lucky that those four mold marks, plus the one there in that corner and that corner, were way at the bottom, and the other two are up here. But the ones up there are so deep into the car, and when you have the grill across, you wouldn't see them anyway. But it's just this area right in here that needs to be painted flat black. Now, when I turn this around, of course, this area would be painted body color. And the only difference is the radiator in here, which is painted gloss black in this case. But I think I will leave that as it is. But there you can see that metal flake in there. Looks pretty good. It's such a dark blue. <laughs> but there you can see where I scratched it because it's all kind of flat looking. So I will just paint this up and then install it in the car. I also have the headlights in the front grille, so it'll all look great. Now I've got the two parts of my model ready to go. We've got the body with the interior installed, as well as the glass. And I also added in details into the engine bay. Now this is just the first coat for these parts, and I kind of had a little spill over off the side of the water bottle, which is a bit of a pain. Here, I'll just show you my boo-boo. There you can see it. So I'm going to have to figure it, see if I got a metallic blue like this. Just paint over the white or scrape it off if I don't. But there's the interior. And just added some glue back here and on those two little pegs that I showed before. And I painted in here flat black. I don't think you can see it the way the body is, but I just did it just in case. Actually, you will be able to see it. I should have painted it right to the back. So maybe I'll do that. Hang on a minute. All right, so I ended up painting that area flat black. It's still wet though. <laughs> and I painted the engine wires and some of the wires that go up from the windshield wiper bottle and whatnot that I missed. Now, I did try to test fit this together and I found that the bottom of the air cleaner, it uh, really had issues trying to get in. So I've removed it for now. I'll glue it back in after. But this is the moment of truth that we wanted to get to. Oh yes, I also got on that exhaust manifold, and I was right. Once the engine had fully dried in here and was solid, this thing just slipped in the side like there was no issue at all. Lined up perfectly with the original exhaust pipe, and just went together beautifully. Little touch-up got to do in there, but that's okay. So now, this is what I've been waiting for all day. Uh... And I know this is going to be a bit complex because it is super tight in here. And I probably should not have glued the front end together. Okay. 
the struggle is real, folks. I was having such a hard time getting around this engine. Okay, here we go. Boy. <laughs> I'm sure I carved a bit of the paint off on there. All right, let's flip this upside down and we just spread the sides out. Try to angle one side in and then I can do this. Like I said, this is such a tight, the way it pops around, it's like a clamshell. There we go. Now, I'm very certain that I probably will not need to uh, put model cement in to keep this chassis in place. <laughs> like, it's not coming out. <laughs> Bang it against the table! Uh, uh. No, <laughs> I won't do that, but uh, maybe a little bit go on the back there. Just a little bead or something right across the bottom and then push that down. Maybe, I don't know. You can see how nice this went together. Get me a little break from uh, working on that uh, AMT 1969 Ford Fairlane, or the uh, Torino Cobra, they like to call it. But anyway, there it is. And that went down nice once we got around the engine bay. So then I will have to put in air cleaner bottom there it is now there are three little um, pins that are sticking out of these air cleaners and don't remove them because that's where that uh, this is gonna sit but anyway there she is so what I'll do is I'll try to add a little glue here and there and the underneath but uh, look at the wheels they seem to be are they too low in that wheel arch? I don't know. I think it looks okay. I'll try to see if I can't wiggle it a bit. Maybe get it... No, it feels like it's uh, where it wants to be. So I guess that's it. So now it's just a matter of putting the bumpers on it and um, doing a little touch up in the engine bay for whatever scraped off in there as I was putting it together. And it should be good. Here's under the hood of our 1969 Dodge Super B 446 pack, and you can see how much more accurate this looks with the orange air cleaner as well as the valve covers. Here I've added in the master cylinder with the power brake booster, and they were painted black on these cars. Now I could have put on that anodized coating on there, but uh, ah, just leave it for now. And then there's our battery with the yellow uh, plugs on them as well as our windshield washer bottle and I was able to correct that little mistake I made using testers arctic blue and that is the closest color match I can actually get to this dark blue that we've got going on if I bring this up into the camera you can see more of how this looks again a lot of nice detail in there for such a simplistic kit I did leave the rusty manifolds on but that's okay, considering that as this would drive around, it would actually burn the paint off the manifolds. But overall, I think this ended up looking really good. These are the decals that came with the kit. And as you can see, you get a white stripe or a black stripe, depending on how you wanted to paint the model. Now, since ours is this dark Arctic blue, the uh, white stripes would work the best. We also have the six pack, which goes on the side of the hood and Illinois Mopar license plate, but I think I'm going to switch this out for something, maybe British Columbia or, you know, something Canadian at any rate. But uh, I'm going to try these decals, see if they're going to work or not, and uh, hopefully they will. And I haven't really applied decals onto straight plastic before, so that might also be a bit of a challenge. Here's the Dodge just before we're going to put on the decals and maybe even white letter the tires, I'm not sure on that. But I uh, just wanted you to see what it looks like in this Arctic blue, and uh, just how neat it is. Now I did add in that metallic reflector paint in the back on the taillights. That would be uh, Tester's Stoplight Red, as well as Tester's Amber on the front. Again, it looks pretty good. 
the front bumpers are a bit scratched and that is what's going on in the box. Now it is unfortunate, but what can you do? The cool thing with the hood scoop is it's actually open and you can see the top of the air cleaner if you get the angle right, which again is pretty cool. Again, not too sure on the brown interior, but yeah, maybe it works. I don't know, maybe it doesn't. But overall, I think this is looking pretty good. So let's attempt the decals. Here's our Super B, now with the white letter tires, as well as the stripe in the back. And that stripe was a real challenge because I f didn't realize that the B is actually facing one direction, not two. So on this side of the car, the passenger side, the B is flying backwards. And on the driver's side, the B is flying forward. And I don't know if that was actually a Mopar thing or was this a mistake by Monogram. But at any rate, I think the white letter tires and the stripe actually do make it look better. It doesn't look as heavy as it did before with black letter tires and uh, without the stripe. The only thing is, I don't know where my Solva set went to. Maybe I ran out, maybe I never got any more. But the decal does want to lift up in the corners and on the tight edges. And uh, But the six pack one, it looked frosty at first, but now it seems to have settled in. This is the era when uh, <laughs> model kit manufacturers used a lot of glue on the backing paper of the decals. And it's really hard to get that off sometimes, so it tends to leave a little bit of uh, silvering around the letters and that sort of thing. But I think overall this ended up quite nice. Let me know in the comments what you think, and now I'll take some close-up pictures of this. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode of Finish It Fridays, where we got to take a look at this. Look at this. 1969 Dodge 446 pack from Monogram. So do you have any models in your collection that you need finishing off? Well, let us know down in the comment section below which one is your oldest. And I wish you good luck on building it and getting it all done so you can put it on your shelf. So until next time, everybody, Happy model building, and we'll see you in the next episode.